If you want to become a productivity master, if you want to become someone who shows up as their most productive and creative self day in, day out, consistently, then you need to understand something that the personal development industry gets very, very wrong about productivity. And this is a criticism I feel uniquely situated to make because I've been involved in the personal development industry for a long time and I am a clinical psychologist who studies the research and the science and productivity and helps people on a daily basis to become better versions of themselves. So here's the mistake that the personal development industry makes. It treats you like a machine. It doesn't treat you like a human being. And because of that, the techniques that the personal development industry gives you tries to squeeze some more out of you. It tries to optimize as though you're a machine. But to be more productive, to move from stagnation to momentum, to move from inconsistency to consistency each day, to move from distraction to focus, you have to realize that you're not a machine. You're a human being and therefore you work by human principles. There are many human processes that people ignore that I as a clinical psychologist help people address in therapy sessions and I see it all the time, people in the personal development industry totally ignoring these human principles. And in this video I'm going to share three of the most important human domains that I ignored but actually have a huge influence on whether you're productive or not. And that is biological processes, social processes and emotional processes. Machines don't have anything to do with that. Machines are not biological. Machines are not social, and machines are not emotional, but you are. And the people who ignore that fact, the people who just try to optimize themselves as though they're machines, those are the people who try to be productive for a while. They get time management techniques, and they create a schedule, and they try to optimize themselves, and then they're productive for a bit of time, but then they slip on a day, and some human process gets in the way, and then they lose some motivation, and then they stop entirely, and then they feel guilty and anxious, and so they try to get more techniques, and then they come back at it, and then they get a few days done, and then it fades off again, and they just find themselves in this ridiculous cycle of trying to treat themselves like machines, get more techniques, optimize, failing, and then feeling very human processes that get in the way but never addressing those human processes. But once you do take those human processes into account, which I'm about to show you how to do, once you start doing that, that is when you begin to shine. That is when you access the fullness of your brilliance. That's when you're going to champion your highest potential. So let's get into these human processes. As I said, I've divided them into three buckets. They are more than this, but these are three really important human domains that you wanna take into account. The biological domain, the social domain and the emotional domain. So let's start with the biological domain. To be at your productive best, you have to realize that you are first and foremost a biological being. That means that even your behavior and even your psychology is influenced by the state of your bodily health, your physical health. Those things will play a role in how productive you are. So just like any other biological being, you know, just like a plant, there are certain conditions that have to be met for you to thrive. For a plant, that is water, nutrient-dense soil, and things like sunlight. That's what helps a plant thrive. But there are things that help you thrive as well. And sure, just like a plant, you're going to need to hydrate, you're going to need good nutrients, and you're going to need sunlight. But you need two more things that a plant doesn't need. The first biological process I want you to take more seriously is physical activity. John Ratey, an American professor and one of the leading experts in the link between physical activity and cognitive functions, has found that even a 30-minute physical activity session, whether that be cardiovascular activities, whether that be uh, muscular training, resistance training, whatever it is, just 30 minutes of physical activity can lead to improvements in your cognitive functions. And if you don't know what those are, those are things like planning, decision-making, memory, attention, these are really important mental functions if you want to be at your productive best. So if you're trying to shine, if you're trying to get more out of yourself, work with this biological process, move more, get more physical activity. The second process in the biological domain that's extremely important for you is sleep. Sleep is extremely important for you to show up each day at your productive best because a study by Lowe and colleagues published in 2016 in a very prestigious scientific journal, Sleep Medicine Reviews, they found, these researchers found, that sleep not only affects your cognitive functions, remember those things like planning, attention, memory, sleep doesn't just impact that, it also impacts your emotional functioning, which can sometimes get in the way of your productivity. 
and it also impacts your motor performance, so how you physically move. And trust me, if your cognitive functioning, your emotional functioning, and your motor functioning are shot, you're as good as a potato. You're not gonna get much done the next day. Yet despite this, and this is what frustrates me as a psychologist with the stuff I see online, despite this, many people in the personal development industry will constantly emphasize this thing of you need to rise and grind, get up early, be part of this morning club. I heard the other day someone saying that they wake up at 2.45 a.m. every day as though that's an accomplishment. It's not because your sleep is really important for your biology and your biology has to be in a good space if you want to be productive. So don't listen to these people who say that you need to rise and grind and sleep when you're dead and that sort of stuff because sleep is very, very important to your productivity. There's a clear link between good sleep and productivity. So your action step here is to make sure that if you're an adult, you're getting eight hours of sleep. I know that sounds like a lot, but it will do wonders for your productivity. Now, before I go through the next two domains, I want to make a quick announcement because I've created the Tools from Therapy membership, which is finally open to all my viewers. If you're tired of generic and unscientific advice that doesn't really get you anywhere in your life, then you need to join the Tools from Therapy membership. In this membership, you'll have access to an online course that will not just give you generic, unscientific advice, but will actually take you through a process that allows you to personalize your personal development. So it allows you to see in what areas do I, as an individual, actually need to grow, and what will help me, given my goals and my context, and then how can I engage in that? How can I actually develop these abilities according to the best science that's available? Furthermore, in the membership, you'll have access to a bunch of training resources, many videos that train you on specific personal development skills. And they train you across nine different life domains. How to improve your thinking, your emotions, your attention, your motivation, your behavior, how to improve your social functioning, your biological functioning, and even your contextual functioning, how to optimize your environment. So if you're tired of feeling like you're not living the kind of life you want, if you're tired of feeling like you're wasting some of that potential that you know you have inside of you, then this membership is for you. So check out the link below that I'll leave in the video description if you're interested. And now back to the video. The second life domain that you want to take into account if you want to boost your productivity and show up at your creative and productive best each day is the social domain. Because whether you like it or not, human beings are influenced by other human beings. Our relationships influence us in many ways and our relationships therefore can either boost our productivity or it can decrease our productivity. People are surrounding themselves with people who are taking away from them. And for many people, this happens in such a subtle way that you don't notice it. But day after day, that builds up. If people are taking away from 5%, 10% of your productivity each day, after a year, you will be way further behind than you could have been if you were surrounded by people who were less toxic or less selfish or people who actually had your best interests at heart. As Mark Ambrose once said, show me your friends and I'll show you your destiny. So who should you be surrounding yourself with? Well, as a psychologist, I've seen three main social processes and each three of those social processes are linked to a specific function that they need to serve. So you need to make sure that your social network serves all three of these functions. The first is accountability, the second is support, and the third is mentorship. First process of social accountability is to make sure that you have people in your life who are holding you to account for your goals. If you want to raise your standards, if you want to have high standards, you need people who are cheering you on and making sure that you're living up to those high standards. If we take an example here, imagine that you start running. You decide that you want to start running, and so you join a running group of people who have already been running for a long time. What you'll notice is that if you join that group, you're going to find yourself trying to keep up with the others. And it might be a bit demoralizing initially because you might be the slowest in the group, but because everyone else is setting the pace, you're going to put more effort in to keep up with them. And so their standards are going to lift you. And they're going to hold you to account to keeping up with them. Whereas if you decided to start running, but instead of joining a formalized running group, you just dragged along a friend who's a bit reluctant, then that friend is going to be setting the bar and your bar is going to lower because of that. And so after a month of running with the running group versus after a month of running with that friend who doesn't even want to run, you're going to be running at a different pace in either of those scenarios. So the point here is make sure that you have people who are holding you to a high standard. The second social process is social support. 
Because you see, sometimes you're not just going to need people who are holding you to a high standard. Sometimes things are going to get difficult. Sometimes some challenges are going to arise. Sometimes you might be emotionally struggling. Maybe just even in your general life, you might be struggling in some way. And in those moments, you need social support to help you get through those difficult times. And what the scientific research is now showing is that people who have more social support are actually more productive. Why is that? It's basically because if you have more social support, you have less stress in your body. That is something we can measure. The more social support you have, the less stress you have in your body. And the less stress you have, the more productive you'll be. So the point here is make sure that you have people who you feel you can rely on emotionally because that is important to your productivity. And the third social process here that can influence your productivity is mentorship. Mentorship is really important because sometimes you don't just need peers who can hold you to account or peers who can support you through something. Sometimes you need someone who's slightly above you, someone who's gone the way and can show you the way. Having that kind of mentorship can provide guidance for you and it can reignite you when you need to be reignited. So the action step here is, do you have mentors and do you use your mentors? And if you don't have mentors, where do you need to look to find the kind of mentors that you need right now? So that covers the social domain. Let's get to the last domain, which is the emotional domain. This is the third domain that many people in the personal development industry ignore, but actually has a huge influence on your productivity that I've personally seen as a psychologist. So you want to master your emotions because as Mavis Mazura once said, emotions can either get in the way or get you on your way. You see, the problem with many people is that they pretend that they don't have emotions. They prefer to act as though there are no emotions going on for them, that they're totally logical, totally rational, totally analytical. But the truth is, if you pretend to not have emotions, which is human, by the way, if you pretend to never have emotions, you can't get good at regulating them. If you pretend to never have emotions, you can't master them. And so showing up as your higher self, showing up as the best version of you, getting to your mountaintop requires you to learn how to master your own emotions. And mastering your own emotions is what's going to lead to productivity. Because many times when people aren't productive, it's not the logic that's getting in the way. It's some feeling. They're feeling tired and so they don't do the task. Or they're feeling anxious and they avoid the task. Emotions play a role in productivity. So let me show you two main categories of emotion that can get in the way. And I'm going to give you a tool from therapy for each of these categories. The first category of emotion is high arousal negative emotions. These are things like anger, anxiety. They're called high arousal because they have a lot of energy. If you're feeling anxious, you're wiggling your fingers and tapping your feet and biting your nails. It's high energy. You're buzzing in a way, buzzing with nervousness. Same with anger. Anger makes you want to punch someone and it mobilizes energy. That's why it's called high arousal negative emotions. Now, the problem with these emotions and how they get in the way of productivity is that if you're feeling a lot of high arousal negative emotions, you're going to get into a fight, flight, or freeze response. That is what these negative emotions do. And if you get into a fight, flight, freeze response, then you're either going to avoid your work, that's flight, or you're going to freeze and procrastinate and not do anything, that's the freeze response, or you're going to want to destroy the work and be counterproductive and self-sabotage, that's fight. So the practical tip here, the tool from therapy that you can use if there are some high arousal negative emotions getting in the way of your productivity is to just slow down your breathing. The research shows that if you slow down your breathing, you pull your physiology, you pull your nervous system out of this fight, flight, freeze response which can then allow you to unlock a bit more of your productivity and access your higher self. Now, the second category of emotion that can get in the way is low arousal negative emotions. So these are negative emotions. They still feel unpleasant, but they're very low. They're very subdued. These are things like feeling depressed or feeling ashamed or feeling disappointed. Now, the problem with these emotions, how they get in the way of productivity is that if you feel these emotions for long enough, your health starts to deteriorate. Unfortunately, the research shows that if you experience enough negative emotions for a sustained period of time, your health gets worse. And if your health is in a poor state, you cannot function productively. So the practical tip here, if, you, if you're experiencing many of these low arousal negative emotions, is to use mood boosting activities to boost your mood. So you need to think about, for me, what usually boosts my mood? What are the things that I do that leads to a better mood? This for many people is 
exercising or going for a walk or getting some sunlight or eating a specific kind of food or uh, socializing with a specific someone that boosts their mood. Whatever it is for you, you need to think about what are these mood boosting activities because these activities act as natural antidepressants which can boost your mood and then therefore boost your productivity. If this video was helpful and you want a clear and evidence-based path to your unique personal development, remember to check out that link in the video description. If not, work on these three domains for now to boost your productivity. Keep doing the inner work and you'll get closer to unlocking your potential. Thanks for watching this. I wish you the best on your personal development journey.